فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم ولذلك the first man or one of the first early people who started to lie about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who made up narrations his name was Abd al-Karim ibn al-Awjan this individual Abd al-Karim ibn al-Awjan he got caught by the Muslim leader and when he got him he had actually placed thousands of narrations he made it up he said the Prophet said this made them all up lied about the Prophet now you find a lot of those narrations are still still being cleaned out are you with me brothers? Those narrations are fabricated narrations. They are a hadith which are mawdu'ah, fabricated narrations. He made them up, lied about the Prophet. Anyways, he got caught. When he got caught, the leader, um, back in those days, this is heresy. This is capital punishment. Just like in America, there's a, there's a death penalty for the person who comes with treason and other things. Even in the UK, I think there's treason. If you come with treason, it's capital punishment, you get killed. So in, the, in our in Muslim governments, this is what it is. This is treason to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's khiyana li deen illahi tabarak wa ta'ala. So he got taken, okay? And he was about to be executed. He was about to be executed. And as he was about to be executed, he said, execute me. Execute me if you wish. You guys can execute me as you wish. And why? I don't mind. I have left enough work for, for centuries to, for you guys to come and not to be able to... To, uh, to get out of. I have made up narrations as I have gone, as I was going on. The leader smiled and he said, you know who lives for that? Abu Nu'ayn Fadl ibn Dukain, Abdullah ibn Mubarak, Abdul Rahman ibn Mahdi, after them, Ishaq ibn Rahuya, Ahmad ibn Hanbal. These scholars are gonna live for that. That's their joy. To sit down and to distinguish those narrations from one another and say this yeah it's made up throw that out throw that out they live for that and they will distinguish everything from something they're going to break it all down and it's true they did they broke it all down and authenticated all the narrations they cleaned it so who who who, who opened this door of lying about the prophet it was them they lied Rather today, the Rafida, one of their belief and the articles of faith is a Tuqiya, right? Taqiya is what? Do you know what they say? Man la taqiyyata lahu faladina lahu. The person who does not have taqiyya, which is to lie about Allah, he has no religion. This is in the most authentic book. What's the most authentic book to us after the Quran? It's in their book, their Bukhari version. It's called Usul al-Kafi. That's their Bukhari. It's in that book of this. Anyone who doesn't have taqiyya, meaning who doesn't lie, he has no religion. A religion that's built on what? Kidib and iftira. Does God need you to lie for him? What did religion is it? A religion, a God that wants you to lie for him. They'll say to you, Akhi, we don't believe in taqiyya. Who said we believe in taqiyya? That itself is a taqiyya. When they say we don't believe in taqiyya, it's taqiyya itself. Are you with me, brothers? So that's something you have to be very careful about. Subhanallah, they'll come to a discussion and a debate and they'll say to you, Aisha, wallahi, she's our mother. Aisha, radiyallahu, we love her. La ilaha, who told you that? Illallah, who told, la ilaha illallah, who told you that? We believe in Allah. We believe in the messenger. We love Abu Bakr. We love Umar. Uthman, this is all a lie. And so they went to Africa and they took so much people with them. So we said, well, lie. We were told all our lives, this is what you guys believe. No, we don't. It's all a lie. We've never believed this. People just swarmed into their belief, thinking that what they are saying is the truth. Like in a kid, you <coughs> القاعدة التاسع وثلاثون The 39th قاعدة أن أثر البدعة يظهر على صفحات وجوههم وفلتات ألسنتهم The 39th قاعدة is The bid'a Sorry, it becomes It becomes prevalent And it becomes clear And apparent 
on their faces. The mubtadi'ah, the bid'ah starts to become, it starts to show from their faces. وَفَلَتَاتِ أَلْسِنَتِهِمْ And on the tip of their tongues. Just like iman, when a person's iman is strong, you can see from their face, nur and haybah and the way they look. The same way is bid'ah. What does bid'ah do? Yeah? The bid'ah say, it darkens your face. It darkens and dulls your face. And the sins, they do that. Allah said in the Quran, Muhammadur Rasulullah Walladheena ma'ahu ashidda'u ala al-kuffari ruhama'u baynahum Tarahum rukka'an sujjadan yabtawuna fadlan min Allahi wa ridwana Seema'hum fi wujuhihim min athari sujood ذلك مثل في التوراة ومثل في الإنجيل كزرع أخرج شطأه ومثل في الإنجيل كزرع أخرج شطأه فأزره فاستغلظ فاستوى على سوقه فاستغلظ فاستوى على سوقه يعجب الزراع ليغيظ بهم الكفار وعد الله الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات منهم مغفرة وأجرا عظيما. الله أوصي سيس إن في ذلك لآيات للمتوسمين. الله أوصي سيس ولو نشاء لأريناكهم فلعرفتهم بسيماهم ولتعرفنهم في لحن القول والله يعلم أعمالكم الله أوصو سيس وإذا رأيتهم تعجبك أجسامهم وإذا رأيتهم تعجبك أجسامهم وإن يقولوا تسمع لقولهم كأنهم خشب مسندة يحسبون كل صيحة عليهم هم العدو فاحذرهم هم العدو فاحذرهم قاتلهم الله أنا يؤفكون Allah also says, وَيَقُولُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لَوْ لَا نُزِّلَتْ سُورَةٌ فَإِذَا أُنزِلَتْ سُورَةٌ مُحْكَمَةٌ وَذُكِرَ فِيَ الْقِتَالُ رَأَيْتَ الَّذِينَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ رَأَيْتَ الَّذِينَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ مَرَضٌ يَنْظُرُونَ إِلَيْكَ نَظَرَ الْمَغْشِيِّ عَلَيْهِ مِنَ الْمَوْتِ فَأَوْلَى لَهُمْ Allah also says وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَا لِكُلِّ نَبِيٍّ عَدُوًّا شَيَاطِينَ الْإِنسِ وَالْجِنِّ يُوحِي بَعْضُهُمْ يُوحِي بَعْضُهُمْ إِلَى بَعْضٍ زُخْرُفَ الْقَوْلِ غُرُورًا وَلَوْ شَاءَ رَبُّكَ مَا فَعَلُوهُ فَذَرْهُمْ وَمَا يَفْتَرُونَ Allah says in this ayah, Muhammadur Rasulullah. Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. وَالَّذِينَ مَعَهُ and those who are with him are a shidda'u ala al-kuffar. They are staunch on the disbelievers. Ruhama'u baynahum. They are merciful to one another. Tarahum. You see one of them. Ruk'a'an. If you look at the companions, this is the way they were. If you looked at them, you see one of them is doing ruku'ah. Sujjadan. The other one is in a state of sujood. I mean, there are people who are consistent ibadah. All of that, they're doing it for what? Yabtawuna fadla min Allahi wa ridwana. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what he's doing is that he is praising them externally from the outer and is also praising them from their hearts. We haven't been we haven't been praised externally and internally. They've been praised They've been pleased for their outer appearance and their praying and their salah. Also they've been they have been praised for what? For what's in their hearts. That all of this wasn't the salah and the siyam and the zakat and all the righteous deeds. It was not to show off. 
and you have the you have the Rafid who have the audacity to insult Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, and Ali, and these are the people Allah is talking about. Allah says, "See ma hum fi wujuhi min athar sujud." When you look at their faces, you see the sign of prostration on their faces. The sujood and the prayer is on their face, meaning their face is glowing. Iman and taqwa is glowing from their faces. Allah then says, Subhanahu wa ta'ala, Mathaluhum fi tawrati, dalika mathaluhum fi tawrati. Allah, when He spoke about them in the Torah, that's how He described them. Wa mathaluhum fi injili, and they are an example also in, in, in injil. They were mentioned in the previous t t uh, uh, books and the previous. So what does this ayah, what, what does the author want to take from this? He wants to take from it, سِيمَاهُمْ فِي وُجُوهِ مِنْ أَثَرِ السُّجُودِ That the iman shows on your face. The Ahlul Bid'ah, their Bid'ah shows on their face as well. وَقَالَ تَعَالَى Allah says, أُوسَوْ إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَاتٍ لِلْمُتَوَسِّمِينَ Allah says, these verses are a sign. وَسْم means a sign. It's something, it's, it's, it's your, it manifests over your, it shows in your face. These verses are going to show on you. Also Allah says in Surah Muhammad, وَلَوْ نَشَاءَ If we willed, لَا أَرَيْنَاكَهُمْ We would have made us, we would have made you see who they are. فَلَا تَعْرِفَنَّهُمْ بِسِيمَاهُمْ فَلَا عَرَفْتَهُمْ بِسِيمَاهُمْ Naam. So you would have recognized them based on the description of their faces and how they are. You'll know them for that. And you'll also recognize them for their utterance and their speech. Allah also said about the munafiqeen, When you see them, like in تُعْجِبُكَ أَجْسَامُهُمْ The munafiqeen, when you look at their bodies, how big they are, how they are structured, how they carry themselves, you'll be amazed. Allah is saying it's about the munafiqeen. وَإِذَا رَأَيْتَهُمْ When you see them, تُعْجِبُكَ أَجْسَامُهُمْ Their bodies fascinate you. How they are and how they look. Allah is saying this to you. وَإِنْ يَقُولُوا But when they speak and they say something, تَسْمَعَ لِقَوْلِهِمْ And you try to listen to what they're trying to say. كَأَنَّهُمْ خُشُبُ مُسَنَّدَةٌ يَحْسَبُونَ كُلَّ صَيْحَةٍ عَلِيمٌ It is the most weakest of speech that you've ever heard. And guess what? يَحْسَبُونَ كُلَّ صَيْحَةٍ عَلِيمٌ Every statement that you say, they think that you're talking about them. Have you seen people who say, oh, you're trying to attack us? Every time they think they're being attacked. You know why you feel like that? Because you know you're upon batil. You know what you're doing is wrong. That's why a person would say, why are you attacking us? Or why are you speaking about us? Allah says, they think. Every noise that comes, it's about them. Allah says, they are their enemies. Be cautious of them. Be cautious of them. So these verses are what? Evidence to show that that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes the truth show on your face. وَلِذَلِكَ you all know the famous hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari in hadith Abi Huraira that فَإِذَا أَحْبَبْتُ If I love a slave, Allah says كُنْتُ سَمْعَهُ الَّذِي يَسْمَعُ بِهِ I become his hearing وَبَصَرَهُ الَّذِي يُبْصِرُ بِهِ And I become his seeing وَيَدَهُ الَّذِي يَبْتِشُ بِهِ And I become his Hands. In other words, what this means is that you won't hear except that which pleases Allah. Allah will protect you from evil. He will allow you not to hear evil. If you become a good slave of Allah and you truly fear Allah, Allah will, Allah will protect you from music. You don't need to stop yourself from it. It will be protected from you. Allah will just want you not to want it anymore. Allah will put you to sleep and put you tired and you're unable to listen to it. You get busy with doing something if you want to do a haram. Allah loves you, man. He doesn't want you to do this. Your eyesight and your seeing, your eyesight and your what? Your eyesight will not look at except that which pleases to Allah. I mean, Allah loves you so much now, He's going to protect your eyes for you. And even your hands, you're grabbing with, you won't grab except that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. Your legs won't walk to except that which is pleasing to Allah. If that person asks me, Allah will give to him. And if he seeks refuge in me, I will, see, I will protect him. Allah says, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the day of judgment, what did Allah tell us? Whose faces is going to glow? 
Allah says in the Quran, يَوْمَ تَبْيَضُّ وُجُوهُ وَتَسْوَدُّ وُجُوهُ فَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ سْوَدَّتْ وُجُوهُهُمْ أَكَفَرْتُمْ بَعْدَ إِيمَانِكُمْ فَذُوقُوا الْعَذَابَ بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَكْفُرُونَ وَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ بِيَضَّتْ وُجُوهُهُمْ فَفِي رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ هُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ Allah also says, وَيَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ تَرَى الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا عَلَى اللَّهِ وُجُوهُمْ مُسْوَدَّةٌ أَلَيْسَ فِي جَهَنَّمَ مَثْوًا لِلْمُتَكَبِّرِينَ وَيُنَجِّ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْا بِمَفَازَتِهِمْ لَا يَمَسُّهُمُ السُّوءُ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ Allah says the day of judgment. وَيَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ And the day of judgment. تَرَى الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا You will see the disbelievers. Yeah? yeah. So, sorry. وَيَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ And the day of judgment. تَرَى الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا تَرَى الَّذِينَ كَذَبُوا You're going to see those who disbelieve. عَلَى اللَّهِ in Allah. تَرَى الَّذِينَ كَذَبُوا You're going to see those who disbelieve in Allah. وُجُوهُهُمْ مُسْوَدَّةً their faces will be darkened. Alaysa is it not? Fi jahannam mathwal lil mutakabirin. Isn't jahannam a place for those who are arrogant? Wa yunajji Allahu alladhina amanu wa yunajji Allahu alladhina taqaw. Allah is going to save those who are pious. Bi mafazatihim la yamassuhum as-su'u wa la hum yahzanun. That day harm will not touch them and that day they won't feel any distress, any pain. Any anxieties that they used to go through when they were in this earth, the pain and everything is all going to go that day. Because they came with taqwa. They were conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As for the ones who disbelieved in Allah, what did Allah say? Wujuhuhum muswadda. Their faces are darkened. Innovators, their face become dark. And it starts to darken in this earth. Also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, Yawma tabiyaddu wujuh. The face, the day when the faces are going to light. وَتَسْوَدُّ وُجُوهُ And other faces will be darkened. فَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ سْوَدَّتْ وُجُوهُهُمْ Those whose face becomes darkened. أَكَفَرْتُمْ بَعْدَ إِيمَانِكُمْ Have you disbelieved after your faith? فَذُوقُ الْعَذَابَ تَيْسْتْ The punishment بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَكْفُرُونَ بِسَبَبِ كُفْرِكُمْ Because of your disbelief. Taste it. وَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ بِيَضَّتْ وُجُوهُهُمْ and the ones whose face is going to glow that day. فَفِي رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ In the mercy of Allah, they're going to dwell. هُمْ فِيهَا قَالِدُونَ They're going to stand there, stay there forever. They're going to stay there forever. This is something you need to think about, brothers and sisters. You need to really ask yourself that day when death comes to you. Allah says in the Quran, سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى كَلَّا إِذَا بَلَغَتِ التَّرَاقِ وَقِيلَ مَنْ رَاقْ وَظَنَّ أَنَّهُ الْفِرَاقِ وَالْتَفَّتِ السَّاقُ بِالسَّاقِ That day when the death, your nafs reaches your collarbone. Right here, Allah says, كَلَّا إِذَا بَلَغَتِ التَّرَاقِ It reaches your collarbone. كَلَّا إِذَا بَلَغَتِ التَّرَاقِ وَقِيلَ مَنْ رَاقِ And then the people say, where's the doctor? Where's the doctor? Call the doctor for her. She's about to die. He's about to die. وَظَنَّ أَنَّهُ الْفِرَاقِ And the person, it becomes clear to him and her that the doctor can't do anything for them. No one can help you today, you're alone. You start realizing that your legs start to lose its life. The nafs has been moved from your legs. It's been moved to your knees. It's going up, you're dying. Allah says, The person, it becomes clear to him and her, that they're, de they're departing from this earth. إِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ يَوْمَ إِذِنِ الْمَسَاقِ And the place that you're going towards is your Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Going to Allah is that He knows everything about you. It's not, you're not going to somebody who doesn't know you. Allah knows everything about you. Everything about your affairs. Everything that you said, everything that you did. 
وما كنت تتلو من قبله من كتاب ولا تخطه بيمينك إذا لارتاب المبطلون لا وما كنت تتلو منه من قرآن ولا تعملون من عمل إلا كنا عليكم شهودا إذ تفيضون فيه ولا يعزب عن ربك من مثقال ذرة في السماوات ولا في الأرض أما في الأرض ولا في السماء وما يعزب كان nothing is hidden from your Lord you're gonna stand in front of him you're departing from this earth you're moving away and you know you're heading towards that Lord. He knows everything about you. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, he knows your khainat al-a'yun wa ma tukhfi sudur what you're hiding in your chest. He knows what's in your mind. He knows what you really did that day when people thought you didn't do it. He knows all of your public and your private affairs. Prepare for that day, sisters, wallahi. Brothers, prepare recently, the other day, just last week, one brother, he lost his wife at the age of 25. His wife was 25 years of age. Death came and he knocked on his door. His brother's not from London. He's now going back to the city that he came from. He's lost his life. He's lost his wife. Death comes, it doesn't look at your age. It doesn't look at your background. It doesn't look at who you know and who you're linked with and your friends. It doesn't care. It will come and it will take you from this world. And the truth of the matter is, is that the only person who's going to be saved is the one who didn't take his religion as a joke. And he didn't play around with his deed. He was serious about his religion while he was alive. He saw this world to be a place of zara, that he, he plants his seeds. You know, if you haven't planted your seeds, when the harvest comes and the people are reaping their fruits and they're, they're, and they're, harvest, and they're harvesting, you can't do that because you haven't put the effort in before, right? You can't because you didn't put the effort in. And that's why Allah says, فَالْيَوْمَنَ نَنْسَاهُمْ كَمَا نَسُوا لِقَاءَ يَوْمِهِمْ هَذَا Today we will forget them the way they forgot our meeting. Because you forgot the meeting of Allah. How did you forget? الَّذِينَ اتَّخَذُوا دِينَهُمْ هُزْوًا وَلَعِبًا وَغَرَّتْهُمُ الْحَيَةُ الدُّنْيَا You took your religion as a joke. You took this world as the ultimate final goal for you. This was your ultimate goal. You only worked for this. You lived for this. You actually forgot there's another day left. There's another stage after this. You forgot that. وَلِذَلِكَ أَعْوَى مَسْنِجَ عَلَيْهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمْ عَيْشِ سَلِي صَحِيْهِ الْبُخَارِي In the الموت الذي توفي فيه رسول الله on his deathbed, the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, he would take both of his hands and he place it inside the water. And he would take it out. And he would take that palms of his and he would rub it on his face, alayhi salatu salam. And he would say to his wife, Aisha, inna lil mawti sakarat. Aisha, death is painful. Aisha said, radiallahu an, I never saw anyone go through the, the agony of death the way I saw the Prophet went through it. And I never sympathized with anybody after I saw the Prophet the way he suffered. On his last moments, the way that the, the, he was watery, she would get him a cloth, she would put it on his forehead, it would dry out because of the so much that was coming out of him. And then when the angel came to him, Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she said, he lifted his fanasaba yada, he pointed his finger towards the sky, and the messenger alayhi salatu wasalam, he said, ila rafiq al-a'la, I want to be with Allah high above. Aisha said, I realize that he has chosen the hereafter over this dunya. Ponder here. And as the Prophet ﷺ was saying that his nafs was coming out of his body and his finger dropped. Ponder here, why would the Prophet choose the hereafter? Because he worked for it. He knows he's got something there waiting for him. But the person who is not a righteous individual, he won't like that day. Well, he said in another hadith, مَنْ أَحَبَّ لِقَاءَ اللَّهِ أَحَبَّ اللَّهُ لِقَاءَهُ وَمَنْ كَرِهَ لِقَاءَ اللَّهِ كَرِهَ اللَّهُ لِقَاءَهُ Anyone who wants to meet Allah, Allah wants to meet them. And anyone who doesn't want to meet Allah, Allah doesn't want to meet you. Aisha said, when you say that the one who wants to meet Allah, Allah wants to meet him, and the one who doesn't want to meet Allah, Allah doesn't want to meet him. Do you mean by death? Are you talking about death? And the messenger alayhi salatu wasalam said to her, no, ya Aisha, I'm not talking about death. But the believer, when he's on his deathbed and he's about to die, he will be shown his place in Jannah. And so he wants to meet Allah. And the disbeliever will be showed his place in the hellfire and he doesn't want to meet Allah. And the reason why a person will be shown their, their Jannah is because they worked for it. 
when they were in the dunya they were working hard and they were putting effort in so my beloved brothers and sisters today is your opportunity to, tomorrow when you come as Allah said about the kuffar and the disbelievers بَلْ بَدَى لَهُمْ مَا كَانُوا يُخْفُونَ مِنْ قَبْلِ وَلَوْ رُدُّوا لَعَادُوا لِمَانُهُ عَنْهُ وَإِنَّهُمْ لَكَاذِبُونَ قَالَ رَبِّ ارْجِعُونِ لَعَلِّي أَعْمَلُ صَالِحًا فِي مَا تَرَكْتِ Allah says كَلَّا إِنَّهَا كَلِمَةٌ هُوَ قَائِلُهَا وَمِنْ وَرَائِهِ بَرْزَقٌ إِلَى يَوْمِ يُبْعَثُونَ They will say the sinners and the criminals will say رَبِّ ارْجِعُونِ Oh Allah take me back to the earth one more time I want to go back I've not done good I know I should have worked hard Oh Allah give me one more chance that's what they will say Allah will say to them إِنَّهَا كَلِمَةٌ هُوَ قَائِلُهَا وَمِنْ وَرَائِهِمْ بَرْزَقٌ إِلَى يَوْمِ بَعْضُونَ كلا that's not going to happen can't happen وَلِذَلِكَ the salaf what they used to do was they used to benefit from that opportunity my beloved brothers and sisters meaning they used to practice that now that they were alive in this world how would they practice it? the poet he said يُمَثِّلُ ذِي اللُّبِّ فِي لُبِّهِ مَصَائِبَ قَبْلَ أَن تَنْزِلَا فَإِن نَزَلَتْ بَغْتَةً لَمْ تَرُعْهُ لِمَا كَانَ فِي نَفْسِهِ مَثَلًا وَذُو الْجَهْلِ يَا مَنْ أَيَّامَهُ وَيَنْسَى مَصَارِعَ مَنْ قَدْ خَلَى فَإِن دَهِبَتْهُ صُرُوفُ الزَّمَانِ بِبَعْضِ مَصَائِبِهِ عَوْلًا They would actually bury, they would actually dig a hole in their own house and they would lie inside it and then they would say to themselves قَالَ رَبِّ رِجَعُونِي Oh Allah, take me back to the earth again one more time. لَعَلِّي أَعْمَلُ صَالِحًا فِي مَا تَرَكْتُ So I can do some righteous actions that I left behind. And guess what they would do? They would come out of the hole and they would take off the dust from themselves and they would come out and they would say to themselves, you've been given a chance now. You've been given a chance now. Work hard and put in efforts. And so he would go and he would put so much effort in in making sure that they, they did righteous deeds.